Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. There's a new album coming out. We've been doing playthroughs, talkthroughs of each track. I'm actually skipping the third track, Let Go, and we're going to go because I've done a couple of talkthroughs about it already, and you have a chance to see it. I'll link up here if I remember. Um, but the next track, Slow Rotation, Slow Rotation Around the Center. Um, it's kind of wonderful, and in a way is, is one of my favorites. Four instances of diva, and it works with the ambiguity of parallel major and minor, both in the one chord and the four chord. It has kind of a shimmering, drony space that, well, let's dive in and listen. <laughs> Okay, so here we are, and let's take a look at what Diva looks like just as a, as a plug-in. It's um, an analog synth emulation that can run in draft mode or divine mode for very high interpolations, beautiful sound. The track itself is built around, I I'll guess I'll, I'll just call it a kind of an A-flat sus7 chord. What's a little bit unusual about it is that sometimes the sounds of the melodies are major sounds, sometimes they're minor sounds. It happens a fourth up as well, major sound or minor sound. The mode for this, I, I don't want to go into too much detail, is a little bit spooky because it has flat nine, down to the A flat. Let's listen to it. We'll try to pick out those moments as they go by. The first tone we hear is the D flat. Add a second. And now the melody doubled in a couple of instances descends down to the A flat. Ah, an A flat in the bass. The F natural gives you a major sound. We sit there and you can hear um, a, a good amount of filter modulation and a, kind of a tube driven echo. That's creating some saturation. The distortion, a slight distortion, actually creates a extra harmonic layer. Here's a minor sound, C flat. I've always been interested in the ambiguity of parallel majors and minors and then the resolution from the minor third up to the major third. Did you hear it? Just looking at the screen here, the minor third up to the major third, minor third, major third. Here's our lead melody again. Very strong Lydian tone there. The Lydian tone, or the leading tone that I'm referring to, is this G natural going back up to the A flat. Right now, it's a little ambiguous whether we're in D flat or A flat. That F flat there, the minor sound on the D flat, always always in my music, I'm looking for two paths or three or four to exist at once. Here it's quite clear the melody is now at an octave. There's the major third to the A flat. And for the first time, <clears throat> a B flat instead of the A. So a regular nine instead of a flat nine. This is very major sounding. Leading tone, G natural, up to the A. 
And I know it's kind of an ear training course we're doing here and these subtle distinctions, these little changes in the melody create a ever evolving experience. Oh, there's the flat seven and the minor third against the D flat. Now we're gonna hear that same phrase that we heard earlier, except now C flat. There's the phone, let me turn it on. I'm a bad YouTuber. Did you catch those changes? The minor third, the flat seven, the minor ninth, the natural ninth. And I love that beautiful moment there, the F natural. Sounds like a D major chord. And now it feels D flat major, doesn't it? Here's our original melody again. Two instances doubling the melody. And this entire time, a fairly dense closed voicing of the A flat sus sound. Sus chords are generally thought of as built as stacks of fourths. If you think about it, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat is a stack of fourths. Or how about this one? This is really what I'm doing. Ooh, big moment there as the bass shifts to the C flat. I'm really thinking of it as A, um, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. Stacks of fourths. Pianists might play it that way. You can also play it closed as it appears on the screen here. I like that closed sound. Major. And the B flat instead of the A natural. The normal ninth instead of the flat ninth. flat third on D flat goes to the major third. The last few moments of the piece sits on that sus chord. This piece, as much as as, uh, as any on the album, is influenced by my experience of walking around in the world. The sounds of traffic, of motor noises, air conditioners, cars, wheels on the road, all create tones. And there's always a subtle play between the tonalities of all those environmental sounds. Environmental sounds have pitch. And there's also a good deal of noise and modulation in environmental sounds. And I've, I've used um, modulating echoes, uh, moving filters to try to create some of that experience. Well, I hope it's useful to look at these as they uh, go by and listen to them. Uh, as always, I'm very interested to know what you're working on like this video, subscribe to it, leave a comment. All those things are great for the life of the channel. And I'm so grateful for how well this channel is doing right now. Um, it's a real pleasure to be doing these with you. Well, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.